Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 6, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Brussels, Belgium. A problem that I've mentioned a couple times before is that users upload files to VirusTotal, not really knowing that these files are likely going to become public. Xavier took a quick look at uh, files in VirusTotal that contain private IP addresses, like within the 192.168 or 10/8 network. Turns out he found a couple different samples and the samples were not necessarily malware. Some of them at least appear to be sort of internal administrative scripts. And of course, leaking these scripts to VirusTotal in this case may also reveal details about your internal network based on the IP address that Xavier found hard coded in these scripts. And if you need more evidence about machines becoming smarter and smarter, there is yet another paper describing how to break Google's reCAPTCHA version 2 using machine learning and artificial intelligence. They're able with a success rate of about 95% to solve these CAPTCHAs where you're being asked to, for example, identify all the cars, storefronts, traffic lights, or other objects in image arrays. Of course, this has been an ongoing cat and mouse battle here between CAPTCHAs and systems to break CAPTCHAs. I actually recently heard that Google is rolling out a yet newer and better versions of their reCAPTCHA system that does rely more on profiling of a particular user's browser history than just on interactions with a CAPTCHA. And then we got a couple of open source projects that released significant security updates. First of all, Samba, the open source implementation of the SMB protocol released a new version that does fix a problem that would allow an attacker to escape from the shared root directory. This vulnerability can only be triggered if specific configuration options are selected. First of all, you need to enable the white links options and then either set the Unix extensions to no or allow insecure white links to yes. And the vulnerability would then allow the attacker to access files outside of the directory that you intend to share. The second issue affects the mail server XM, and this one is probably more severe as it does allow a local or remote attacker to execute programs with root privileges. Now, there aren't any details available right now. They should become available later today, but a patch has been released and you should apply this probably pretty quickly. And I have seen that at least some Linux distributions already have published updated packages as of earlier today. We also got updates for Android. Now, uh, these updates do fix two critical vulnerabilities in the media framework. That's of the old favorite for Android, one of these vulnerabilities affects uh, Android version 8 through 9. The second one only affects Android version 10. There are also two additional critical vulnerabilities in the Qualcomm drivers for Android. As far as I can tell, nothing about the vulnerability regarding over-the-air provisioning that can be triggered via SMS messages. I talked about this yesterday, but uh, probably not really sort of in scope for Android since this only affected certain manufacturers. One of the initial very popular features of Twitter was the ability to directly tweet by sending an SMS message to Twitter from a phone associated with the respective 
Twitter account. Now, this feature, of course, has become the target of a lot of attackers. And since last week, the Twitter's CEO's phone number was cloned and used to tweet some derogatory tweets. Twitter has earlier today decided to no longer allow tweeting directly via SMS. Now, later today, they went back on this a little bit again and uh, posted that in certain markets where internet connectivity is not that great and the use of SMS for tweeting is quite popular, they relaxed this restriction again. But in general, they stated that this is nothing where Twitter really can do fix anything because uh, the ability to clone phone numbers, that's really a problem with mobile phone operators and not so much a problem with Twitter. And then we got this week also a new edition of the SANS Securing the Human Ouch newsletter. This is the newsletter that's being published by the SANS Security Awareness part that does really target more your average user. And this edition does deal with scams that use social media. So share it with your family, share it with colleagues. That's sort of really the intended audience for these newsletters letters. That's it for today. So thanks again for listening. I will talk to you again on Monday, but a little caveat here, beginning of next week, I'll be in a little bit of tricky location, internet coverage wise. So I may not be able to actually upload this podcast every single day. We'll see how it goes. But uh, if I'm not here Monday, well, uh, probably just not able to get a reliable internet connection. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday, hopefully.